Today I'm going to look at the planche lean exercise. So this is a fantastic planche drill that's going to condition the position not only of the biceps, of the elbows, of the scapula, that strong protraction, but also the body line position. So what we're aiming for is a straight line from our shoulders through to our feet and not have our hips piked up in the air like this and definitely not having the hips sag down like this. We wanna make sure everything we do about the protraction lean or the planche lean is in this really rounded upper back position. We want that to be the controller, the main energy piece of the planche that eventually will lift up the body, lift up the toes. In a lot of ways, it's much easier to get into the planche position in that tuck planche position because I can protract up into a round ball and push up and forwards. So I can get that full protraction there, hold the position. Now that's quite comfortable to hold, it feels natural to be rounded. When we're in a straighter position like this, it's easy to sag the hips, sag the scapula. So we wanna really focus on that protraction of the scapula. If you're new to this, we wanna be thinking about scapula push-ups from a range of motion point of view and also a strength point of view. So here I'm going into retraction and then I'm gonna go up into protraction. So that's why around the upper back, you shouldn't see my shoulder blades. Back to retraction, back up to protraction. Once that's comfortable and I've got good range on my knees, I can do exactly the same thing on my toes. So I'm gonna come down to retraction, up to that protracted position. Again, you shouldn't be able to see my shoulder blades. So when you're on your toes, you should have exactly the same range of motion through the scapula that you do when you're on your knees. Once we understand the scapular position and we're comfortable to find that full protraction, then I'm gonna attempt the planche lean for the first time. So I'm gonna externally rotate the hands. I'm gonna have the hands quite wide that's gonna create a bit more space and allow me to go forwards without killing the wrists. If I come like this, have fingers forwards, then straight away, that's squishing my wrists and making it really hard and I'm more likely to bend arms or try and compensate because I don't wanna to put too much pressure in the wrists. So externally rotate hands out push up into protraction. So there's my protracted position, and I'm gonna try and hold that protraction while I step out. Now I've still got that protraction, now I'm just gonna lean forwards a little bit more. Now in this position, as long as I'm keeping rounded, I can turn the toes over. That again is gonna try and emphasize more load, more weight through that upper back, and then notice my hips. So I don't want my hips to come up or to go sagging down. So we really wanna have that straight line, full protraction, and the best thing you can do here is video from the side so you can see what you're actually doing instead of what you think you're doing. Now that's what, that was a good 10, 15, 20 second hold, and that's what I recommend you do. Don't just do it for five seconds, see what you can get for around 15 to 20 second video in from the side, check the hips, check the protraction, check the arms, that the elbows aren't bending. Now you can measure this one, you could use the wall, you could put your toes against the wall, and then I can measure the distance from the wall to my hands. And now when I come out, the wall's gonna make sure that my feet don't go backwards and I'm in that position. The only downside of doing it that way is it's very easy to pike the hips up because you're restricting yourself from your feet going backwards so your body's gonna look for an out. So it'll often take the hips up. A lot of people will prefer to use P-bars. There's nothing wrong with using P-bars. I think it's a fantastic way of doing it and being much nicer to the wrists. But I'd also make sure you're doing some reps and sets on the floor because you're more than likely want to go from a handstand position down to a planche position. And if you don't have the condition in the wrists, when your hands are on the floor, you're gonna struggle with that transition unless your hands stand on the P-bars as well. So same things on the bars, protract, round, come forwards, turn the toes over, try and have the hip nice and low, hold that position. If you can, you can keep sliding forwards a little bit. Now with the planche lean, you can add a band in, you can raise the feet, you can use a pulley system. What that'll do is it'll help to bring your feet up level with your shoulders and mimic that position of the full planche. But just remember, we don't want to rely on these things too much because we end up dumping energy back in this direction and we want to make sure that we've got as much energy going in that way as possible with the goal is decreasing or eliminating these as fast as possible. So I'm just going to stick the band over there. If you put it on a strap or a ring, it's easier to adjust. But let's go with that now. I'm gonna do one here with the feet in. Now, with the feet in, it is giving you a lot more help than if you put the band around the hips. But out of interest, let's use the P-bars and just see if I can get up into a full planche position and make the toes flow. 
and I want to have that quality of that planche lean in the protraction scapula area. So I won't know until I look back at the video to see what sort of position I was in there, but it felt like I was really focusing on that protraction still, which is the main goal. Let's compare the same without the P-bars. Definitely harder than the P-bars, but it'll be interesting to compare the two. So another option is to raise the feet up onto a step or a bunch of mats. And this way we're gonna try and get the feet in line with the shoulders to make it like a true representation of what it's like to be in the full planche position. But obviously I'm still gonna have a little bit of weight in the toes. Another option is to use a pulley system like this. That way I can change the weight that our assistance I'm gonna have. A pulley is great because it doesn't give you much friction. If you use something like this with the strap over like a bar or the ring, then it does create a lot of friction. So it's a little bit false in terms of the weight you're using. But this is pretty cool because it's measurable. Let's see if I can get five kilos. I think that's gonna be a bit much to ask, but let's see what happens. No, like five kilos isn't enough for me. I could feel it start to move a little bit, but uh, not enough. Okay, this is two and a half kilos. So this will be seven and a half kilos. Let's just see if I can get it off the floor and it'll be good because I'm getting back more into my planche training. So it'll be good to come back and test this again in a few weeks. So let's see with seven and a half kilo assistance. Gotta trust that's not gonna fall down on me. Okay, so we can get a little bit of a float there in the full planche position. Again, I've got to check the video, see what the position is like, but that was seven and a half kilos. This is five kilos, a pulley, and a ring on the other end. So I'm gonna place that there. I'm gonna do some sort of handstand. I'm gonna find the ring. So at the moment I'm alternating sessions. So I'm doing bent arm one day, straight arm the next. Combination of press and planche work on the straight arm day. For the bent arm, it's handstand push-ups, muscle ups, pull-ups, rows, things like that. Plus most days, I'd say every day bar a few, I'm doing my balance work. So one arm handstand work, shapes and teaching handstands. Let me know down in the comments if you're training planche leans. Have you tried the pulley or the band system? If you're interested in coaching or the app, check out the website www.pulltimer.com.au and I'll speak to you on the next one. Thanks guys.